All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hope for elect scattered abroad, teaching his word of sincerity and truth. Shalom. All right, I'm the brother Taza Ward from the GMS New Jersey camp. And um, this is going to be a quick one, but uh, this is my response to this madness, all right, spewing from IU, uh, ISUPK, you know, and a uh, uh, character, uh, Captain Cesariak. All right, you know, they have this rhetoric and this, uh, you know, false teachings of John the Baptist saying that he wasn't in the truth. When clearly John the Baptist was a forerunner before Yahweh Shai. For Yahweh Shai, I should say, is, you know, he was a forerunner for Yahweh Shai. Okay? And um, it's plenty of precepts to prove that John the Baptist was well beloved of the Lord. Okay? And, and also proving that John the Baptist also spoke of the Lord because he didn't speak of himself. Just like he said, uh, there's someone whose shoes he cannot latch it, roughly paraphrasing. He was speaking of Yahweh Shai. All right. It was to the point that he didn't even want to baptize Yahweh Shai because he thought he was being out of order. All right. But Yahweh Shai told him to baptize, to baptize him because it was the ordinance to do so. Because John the Baptist was a forerunner before Yahweh Shai. And if anyone clearly, you know, listening to those teachings of ISUPK, you're a fool. All right. Even Esau knows this. And all you have to do is read the scriptures, you know, it's a lot of pride, you know, <laughs> and I believe in God sold out, you know, it's my personal opinion. And they're, they're now waxing worse, you know, teaching these lies on the scriptures and it all is to just bring forth prophecy, you know, because you got your false teachers and you got your you got your false prophets and you got your true prophets, man. All right. <laughs> and um, let me say this, too, before I start reading the scriptures. You know, the Lord said, my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways. All right. So the way that the Lord do things and how he done things, okay, in the earth to bring forth prophecies is his will. Who are you to question the Lord or, re or repute anything to the most high? <laughs> okay. Because this is his show. This is his movie. We are his creation. You know, this is the same thing, an example of Jacob and Esau, right? So you got the Mormons today that believe that Jacob was the wicked one and Esau was the righteous one. And they believe that because Jacob supplanted Esau two times. Well, the Lord spoke to Rebecca when they were in her womb. All right. When it was before they was being conceived and they was in her womb, the Lord gave Rebecca these prophecies. He said, one shall be stronger than the other. Two different men of people shall separate from thy bowels. The elder shall serve the younger. All right. So Rebecca knew. And that's why she helped Jacob supplant Esau. Okay. Because she knew who the heavenly father was dealing with and who he was choosing. All right. So this is the same type of thing when it comes to this IU, ISUPK characters. You know, these false prophets, you know, <laughs> Captain Cesariot. You know, and General Yohanna, you know, which is the, their head, you know, you never see him prophesizing or teaching. They come up with these lies. And that's, you know, and I believe they sold out. You know, that's all it is to it. You know, it's nothing to be marveling about. You know, they sold out a long time ago and they just holding their end of the bargain. You know, and they got to wax worse. They got to push these things out there because they're false teachers. They're false prophets. But, you know, it's the same thing when it comes to this guy, John the Baptist, dealing with them. And their intake on what John the Baptist was for, you know, that he did his own thing. Um, he, uh, what did he say in the video? <laughs> that uh, he fell out because he, you know, questioned the Lord. And so, you guys are crazy, man. You know, y'all playing with fire, man. You know, you're playing with the Lord's word, man. You know, <laughs> and what you're doing is um, you're offending the little ones, you know, to, to stumble. You know, those that's newly fruit coming in. They don't know these scriptures and they believe in themselves to be an Israelite. They believe in the Lord. They see the prophecies and you're teaching them this. You're going to pay for that, man. But anyway, you know, I wanted to bring that up with Jacob and Esau because the most high deal with prophecy and he dealt 
with that prophecy of Jacob and Esau, which is still being done today. All right. Because we're still we're still here. We're still in Esau's kingdom. OK. And Jacob have not received the, uh, the adoption yet. OK. We have not seen the receive the kingdom yet. So it could be confusion, you know, when you read in the scriptures as a story and not understanding prophecy. All right. Right there with Jacob and Esau. Wasn't Esau supposed to receive the inheritance of the father? The, the, well, the inheritance of the first son. OK. Wasn't he received, supposed to receive the blessings? Well, Jacob supplanted him for both of those things. You know, so in the same way how John was before Yahweh Shai. Okay? This is the Lord's movie. He does things in a way that you might not understand. Okay? And that's because the Lord hasn't given you the understanding, man. It's not, this is not complicated. This is simple, man. You know, and, and it's embarrassing. As the elder apostle to us said in his video, it's embarrassing, man. Because you're allowing these Edomites, you know, to to basically, you know, when they when they when they talk about one Hebrew Israelite camp, they talk about all of us. So you're giving them ammo. All right. But anyway, this is prophecy as I speak, you know, as the as um the Lord told Ezekiel. Um, matter of fact, let me get it real quick. All right. Let me get this. Um. Ezekiel chapter 13 and uh, 1, it says, And the word of the Lord Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesies, and say thou unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts, hear ye the word of the Lord. So the Lord set Ezekiel up, and Ezekiel is an example for all of us prophets, all of us men of the Lord who've been out teaching his word of sincerity and truth, to basically prophesy against the prophets, the so-called prophets of Israel, all right, because that's what false prophets are. They're so-called prophets. You know, they speak lies. They're not speaking the truth. And it says, and say thou unto them that prophesies out of their own hearts, because what Captain Tazariot, General Yohanna, and the rest of the dominions of ISUPK, they teach out of their own hearts. You can clearly see that in their teaching. It's a lot of pride, you know, when they teach. You know, one guy, the big heavy set guy, he's teaching um, and dissing his own congregation at the same time where he's trying to teach them. They have they have like a forceful aggression of teaching to where, you know, it's not um, it's not sincere. It's more like of a bully style of teaching, you know, like I'll beat you up, <laughs> you know, in a way it's the spirit that I get from them guys. Like like it's a forceful way. It's, you know, it's, it's carnal. It's not spiritual at all, you know. And he's talking shit about you at the same time you're you're supposed to be, you know, looking up to him and learning. You know, them guys are a bunch of carnal men. All right. So it says, um, and say thou unto the prophets, say thou unto them that prophesies against, I mean, out of their own hearts. Hear ye the word of the Lord. So when, when the brothers, starting with the apostles, the elders, and the men on and down, when they're teaching and coming out the scriptures, you're hearing the word of Yahweh. All right, that John the Baptist was in the truth okay what what is being in the truth you know the truth is following yahweh bashim yahweh shai john the baptist did follow yahweh shai he taught of yahweh shai okay he baptized uh men in israel okay with water which symbolized the word until yahweh shai came on the scene what was he supposed to do he wasn't yahweh shai he knew that yahweh shai was coming someone someone above and, and over him you know what I mean he wasn't in the truth? God, what's wrong with you guys, man? <laughs> anyway, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have and have seen nothing. So really, you can say that these guys over here, ISUPK, are foolish prophets. All right? They're foolish. That follow their own spirit. That's their own spirit. What other Israelite camp? What does the other Israelite camps got to say about ISUPK? They would never say nothing. <laughs> Because they don't, it's funny how GMS is always the one standing stiffly for the name of the Lord. You know, it's funny how GMS is always um, teaching the scriptures and teaching the truth. You know, standing on the doctrine and the gospel of the Lord, man. You know, because you got many other men out there outside of Great Millstone, which are some of these men are elect as well. You know, it's elect scattered. But where are they at? 
when it comes to uh, rebuking and reproving men of Israel that's teaching lies. Where are you guys at? Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, woe unto the foolish prophets. Now, the Lord here in Ezekiel 13 is talking to the false prophets of Israel. He's not talking about Edomites. He's not talking about no Moabites. He's not talking about no Hamites, no Ishmaelites. He's talking about the Israelites. He sent Ezekiel to prophesy against the false prophets of Israel. Okay. Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. Because ISUPK, General Yohani, he ain't seen nothing. All right. It says, O Israel, thou prophets are like the foxes in the desert. And why? Because when foxes are in the desert, in order for them to survive through the heat, they have to they dig big, they dig deep holes in the in the um in the sand. All right. And that's that that digging deep holes keep them cool. All right. So basically, what is the Lord saying? Thou prophets are like foxes in the desert, meaning cap, meaning since we talking about ISUPK, General Yohanna, Captain Tazariak and all of the minions, all of all of his uh, men. When they teach these false doctrines, they're digging a deep hole for themselves that they can't get out of. That's all. It's, that's all you're doing. You're digging a deep hole for yourself that you can't get out of. It says, ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. So you're not really building upon the Lord's elect. You're not going into the gaps. You're not building a hedge, man. You're not teaching the truth. You're not, you're not, you're not teaching it. When you're not teaching the truth, you're not, you're not teaching, you're not giving through the spirit of the Lord. You're not giving the elect the protection that they need to stand in the great battle of the day of the in the day of the Lord. All right. Did not the scripture say the knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of thy times? How are the elect are going to be stable in these last days and these darkest hours to come through Jacob's trouble? Because they have been hedged because of the knowledge and wisdom. OK, it says they have seen vanity and lying divination, saying the Lord saith, and the Lord have not sent them. And they have made others to hope that they will confirm the word. This is clearly talking about I, I, ISUPK. This is ISUPK right now. OK, they have seen vanity and lying divinations, saying the Lord said, and the Lord Yahweh have not sent them. The Most High ain't sent no general, Yahana. He didn't send no captain to Zariah. You know, maybe you repent. I hope you would. But if not, the Lord ain't dealing with you. This is lies. Clearly lies on the scriptures. This is lies. John the Baptist wasn't in the truth. What are you talking about? John the Baptist was a forerunner, my guy. And they have made others to hope. Uh-oh. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. So you got followers that that. They believe you made them hope in that you are the, the teachers and that they follow in the ways of coming back into Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. That they could be saved by Yahweh Shah. It says, and they made others to hope that they would confirm the word, man. You know, and that's it on that. Let's go into Luke. Maybe this is going to be long. I didn't want it to be too long. But anyway, let's go into Luke. And um, and I jotted down some precepts. Luke one and nine to seventeen. All right, so I want to start here at uh. Let's see. Uh, this is. Let me see here. All right, this is Luke chapter one and five. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea. A certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abia and his wife was the daughter of Aaron and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before the Most High, walking in all the commandments of the ordinance of the Lord blameless. All right. Now, this is the parents, OK, of John the Baptist, and they had no children because that Elizabeth was barren and they both were now stricken in eight, stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before the Most High in the ordinance of his course, all right, Zacharias, the father, 
It says, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were playing without at the time of the incense. And they appeared unto him, and there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thou prayer is heard. And thou wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. So if John the Baptist wasn't in the truth, why in the hell would the Lord send an angel to Zacharias to tell him that he's going to bring forth a son and call his name John? All right. This shows you that this child before he was born was chosen right then and there. He was chosen. He was going to do the will of the most high. Okay. It says verse 14. And thou shalt have joy and gladness and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. Uh oh. And shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. Okay. So John the Baptist was special. He was chosen from the heavenly father. All right. And it said he shall be filled with the Holy Spirit. How is he not in the truth? Man, from his birth, he was he, he, he was born in the truth. What are you talking about, man? John the Baptist was born in the truth. The most high. It was foretold of him before he came. How truthful could it be? How What truth could he not be in? What are you talking about? And he shall be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb, just like Yahweh Shai. All right. It says, and many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their power. Hmm. I mean, that's what people in the truth do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The men of the Lord, they were set up as like John the Baptist, because we're all now today kind of in a sort of way like John the Baptist. Waking up back in their brothers are waking up back in their life and they're teaching repentance, make uh teaching the hopeful elect to wake up and come back until Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, right? That's being in the truth. It says, And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their power. All right, let me um select you. All right. So it says, And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their power. You see that? Meaning he 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 was a a, a a a leader and someone that was going to inspire, inspire, okay, and lead the hopeful elect back into the most high their power. Lead them down the path of righteousness. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias uh -oh, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. To make ready people prepared for the Lord. So that was John the Baptist's whole sole purpose being here in the earth. All right. From the birth, it was foretold of him as prophecy to his father. All right. That he was going to have a son. He was going to call his name. It got down to the point that Zacharias had to call his son John because it was told to him by the angel of the Lord. All right. And he said what he was going to do when he came. He was going to turn Israel back into their power, which is Yahweh. All right. So there you go, man. Now. I could have went even more on that, but, you know, these scriptures, brothers, you should know it's good to read these chapters again. And let's get the next scripture. Like I said, I jotted these precepts down. So let me go from here. It's Acts 13, 23. Right now. Let's go there. I could have read it from there, but I, I might want to go into a word. So let's go into the blue letter. Acts 13, 23. Now, it says Acts 13 and 23. Of this man's seed have the most high. Hold on. Let me see something. 26. 
So it says, of this man's seed have the most high according to his promise raised unto Israel a savior, Yahweh Shai. So notice in this scripture, the Lord is talking about the savior now. Because John, his mission was to bring you forth, was to bring you to the power, bring you to the word. All right. Meaning he couldn't save you. All right. This is why John the Baptist also knew that he said, you know, there was uh, one that's come with shoes. He could not latch it, roughly paraphrasing, because he knew he couldn't save them. He could only steer them back unto the Lord, you know, get them back on the right path. All right. But now this is the savior. This is the one that's going to save us, which is going to come back in this time. All right. To take down you Edomites and to deliver and to deliver the elect, which I hope to be a part of Lord's willing. All right. If I endure and give diligence. All right. That he's going to deliver the elect by the way of his chariots, man, his angels on this on this go around. It's going to be a glorious Beautiful day when the Lord cracked those clouds. But anyway, it says of this man's seed have the most high according to his promise raised unto Israel a savior, Yahweh Shai. Now, when John had first preached before his coming, the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. You see, because what was John the Baptist purpose was to was to get was to basically to be a, a, a leader Someone who can teach the Lord uh, uh, word, you know, especially the word of what baptism. OK, while he was baptizing them in water, which the water symbolizes the word. It was of repentance because Israel needed to repent from their wicked ways. All right. So when John had first preached before his coming, the baptism of repentance to all people of Israel, not to all nations. It was to the Israelites. But. The same way as today, John the Baptist's purpose was needed because just like it is today in 2020, the men of the Lord, the true men of the Lord, I should say, the hopeful elect are, are doing exactly what John the Baptist have done. All right. Teaching the baptism of repentance, man, which is the word. Come back into the word. Come back into your inheritance. All right. If you are the seed of your father, you are the seed of your father. If your father line go back to being an Israelite, you should be following the Israelite customs. You should be worshiping, praying until Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You should be manning yourself and hasting in the day. Manning yourself in godliness and hasting in the day, man. You should be looking forward to the prophecies, man. The one that's coming. We're like John now. We're just like John, man. Oh, man, yo. It's getting me excited. Because we know we can't save you. We telling you to get right, just like John the Baptist, because the one that is coming is the Savior. And that's Yahweh Shai, just like it was before. <laughs> man, you're going to say John the Baptist not in the truth, man? Is this worth a lesson to do for you guys? Like, like this, this is... Like, at first I wasn't going to do no lesson. I seen, they, you know, apostles, elders, everybody doing it. But then I say, you know what? You know, I have to. Might as well, because this is common sense, man. Right, anyway, uh, verse 25. And as John fulfilled his course, uh oh, John fulfilled his course, being the forerunner before Yahweh Shai, for Yahweh Shai, he said, Whom think ye that I am? I am not he, but behold, there come one after me whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to loose. So that is the proper way of the saying it. So like you, I was roughly paraphrasing it before. All right. But what John said, John fulfilled his course. All right. Because when Yahweh Shai showed up, John fulfilled his course. That was his sole purpose. He was a forerunner for Yahweh Shai coming. We're doing that now. The elect today that's teaching, prophesizing. They're, 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 they're fulfilling their course until Yahweh Shai come crack those clouds. Remember the second Thessalonians, the Lord said he would destroy them with the bright with the um with the spirit of his mouth and then with the brightness of his coming. The spirit of his mouth right now are the prophets. The brightness of his coming is Yahweh Shai. He said, Whom think ye that I am? I am not he. Right? He's not the one that's gonna save you. But behold, there cometh one after me. Whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to loose. 
See that, man? So I think that was it on that. I'm going to try to, okay, 26. It says, men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you feareth the most high, to you is the word of this salvation sent. You see? Because mm. let's move on. Let's move on. Isaiah 40 and 1 to 3. All right. Isaiah 41. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, saith the Most High. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her welfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is perdone. For she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord Yahweh, make straight in the, in the desert a highway for our power. Now this is the prophecy for John the Baptist. Okay? Because he is the voice that crieth in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Same thing that the Lord men are doing today, starting with the apostles and elders, man. All right. And I'm going to say of great millstone. And there's other men out there that's following and teaching the word as well. The elect. I'm going to say the whole four elect in the world. All right. That's set up to be the prophets, the teachers. Right. They're preparing the way to the Lord, just as John the Baptist did. So you telling me that John the Baptist wasn't in the truth? You saying the Lord wasn't in the truth? These guys are bugged out, man. Get away from them guys, man. Stop going back to their classes. Stop watching them. Cut them off. You know, you're not supposed to be ignorant for, uh, of Satan devices, man. There's Satan devices going on over there, man. Until they repent, you got to get away from them, man. Now, this is John 1 and 15. Let me get that one. This is John chapter 1 and 15 to 23. It says, John bear witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spect. He that comfort, or he that cometh after me is prepared before me, for he was before me. And this is John speaking on Yahweh Shai. So John wasn't prophesizing of himself. John had a he had a particular mission that the most high had for John, and that was it. Because Yahweh Shai was going to take, take it from there. The Savior is here. What do we do? Well, why, why would I, why would I, you know, when Yahweh Shai is coming back now to save us, right? Because obviously at that time, he was, Yahweh Shai was coming to give repentance to Israel. Okay. He was there to find his men who was given to him by the Heavenly Father. All right. Behind the teachings of John the Baptist. All right. John the Baptist was preparing Yahweh Shai's way. So when Yahweh Shai, he continued to teach what John the Baptist was teaching. But he was the actual savior and he was there to, to basically give repentance. All right. To those of the whole four elect to seal them, man. Now, on this go around, the Lord is coming to save us. Why in the hell will we? Uh, why would today? Why would we continue to prophesy when the Lord done crack those clouds? Why will we still be out there with Bibles and the Lord is actually fighting for us and killing Esau and destroying them? You know? Because John the Baptist's mission was accomplished. That's what the Lord used John for. Before Yahawashai came on the scene. When Yahawashai came on the scene, that's it. That's it for John. John finished his work. And then he came back as what? Elijah, man. Okay? Which we know, excuse me, which he was Elijah, which we understand that Elijah was going to come in the last days. All right? Which we understand to be who? Ivan Bivens, man, to start this thing off for us. All right. And now you got vocab. You're giving ammunition and ideas for vocab, you know, to make videos. You know, but it is it's going to be what it's be because the truth is the truth and lies are lies, man. All right. And the most high is going to deliver his elect regardless of what man thinks. You know, it says John bear witness of him and cried saying, this was he of whom I spect. He that cometh after me is prepared before me, for he was before me. <laughs> and of his fullness have all we received the grace for grace. 
for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth come came by Yahweh Shai Mashiach. All right. Okay, let's go to 23. Let me continue. No man have seen the Most High at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. And this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are thou? Because they wanted to know, you know, who, who are you? Who are you? you? Because you come in like the one we looking for, the Savior. But John was just the forerunner to set it all up. All right. And this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Hamashiach, the Messiah. All right. Because he's saying, Look, I'm not the Messiah, you know, because they thought he, he might have been through because of the prophecies. All right. It says, and they asked him, what then? Is thou Esaias? Who is that? Elijah. All right. Because they said, well, he coming like a prophet. He must be Elijah. And he said, I am not. Because why? John didn't know. All right. The most High, when we come back out as newborn babes, you don't know your past life. All right, and then John wasn't going to uh, meddle in that. All right. To say that he was John only knew that he was John. All right. John the Baptist. And he was a forerunner for the Lord. It says, are thou that prophet? And he answered no. And that's the truth. John was supposed to say no. He wasn't supposed to say yeah. He was supposed to say no. This is the Lord's movie, man. And it says, then said they unto him, who are thou that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Uh oh. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet of Esaias. So, <laughs> going back to Isaiah 40, proving, you know, John probably don't even, John didn't know, you know, I'm pretty sure John knew what he was saying, but it goes back to the prophecy in Isaiah 40 and 3. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert of a highway for our power. All right. So John was the forerunner. He was the one crying in the wilderness. He was the one Isaiah, the prophet, was speaking of. Okay. So you're talking about John wasn't in the truth. This is ridiculous. You know, for a man to be really boastful and to be serious about this. Serious about that. You know, you guys is... If you don't humble down, the most high gonna humble you in a way where you can't, you know, you wish you, you know, you never um, you know, was got into that spirit, man. Let that spirit drive you like a Maserati. That demon driving these guys like a Maserati. And that's because of the money. That's because of um the the fame. You know, that's because they they they're stabbing themselves in this place, you know, and making covenant with heathens, man. You know, you wanna, you know, make some way to where you this popular type of Israelite. This thing is not about you. It's about the Lord. We're prophets just set up to teach and that's it. That's all, man. Ain't here to be no damn celebrities. <laughs> anyway, Ephesians 1 and 7. And I'm going to read it from here. This is Ephesians chapter 1 and 1. And 1. Paul, an apostle of Yahweh Shah and Mashiach. So I get it. Paul, an apostle of Yahweh Shah and Mashiach, by the will of the Most High, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Yahweh and Mashiach. Grace be to you and peace from the Most High and our Father and from the Lord Yahweh and Mashiach. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Yahweh and Mashiach, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Hamashiach, according as he have chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Uh oh. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So all the men who the Lord set up to speak this truth was chosen from the foundation of the world. So you're going to tell me that John the Baptist wasn't in the truth when he was chosen from the Most High to speak this truth, to pave the way for Yahweh Shai? Huh? According as he have chosen us in him. Before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. 
John didn't do no wrong. There was no fault in John. John didn't uh, 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 get put to death because he sinned against the Heavenly Father. Okay, well, he did a great sin to where the Lord wanted to destroy him. His story wasn't like Saul. Saul went off and was wicked, man. All right, John the Baptist did what he was supposed to do. And his work was done. Shai was on the scene. All right. Verse five. Having predestinated. Uh oh. Predestinate. It says having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Shai Mashiach to himself. According to the good pleasure of his will. To the praise of the glory of his grace. Wherein he have made us accept in the beloved. Accepted in the beloved. In whom. We have redemption through his blood and forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Because that's another thing Yahweh was doing. He came to give grace. It was about faith now, believing in him. It wasn't about the law anymore. And that's what John the Baptist was teaching. Faith. He was teaching it faith before Yahweh came on the scene. All right. You know, uh, I was a few, what was it I wanted to say? Um, I got to watch that video again. But anyway, it's, it escapes me. But here it is. That's it, man. John the Baptist was in the truth. All right. John the Baptist is going to be in the kingdom of heaven, man. John the Baptist, shit, he could be, hey, shit. You know, he's going to be there. All right. John the Baptist was Elijah. John the Baptist was Ivan Bivens to start this thing off, man, for us to get, to get going, man. Because it's all according to prophecy, man. So, you know, I hope this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's whole four elect. Shalom.